Hey listeners, welcome back to another episode. I'm Ricky. And I'm Brittany. And we are Paper Paper Screen. Screen. And if this is your first time listening, welcome to our show. And if you're returning, welcome back. Okay, Ricky, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Well, I've been reading this book called Cabin of the End of the World. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, it's like a suspense thriller horror maybe Mm -hmm. um not sure but the focus of the story is like about a gay couple and their child and they go to this cabin wait is this the new m night Shyamalan movie yes (gasps) and that's the reason why i'm reading it because i wanted to compare the two stories so amazing but anyways that's what i've been up to what about you Brittany? Well, I injured my psoas, which is the muscle that like weaves through your hip and your lower back. Wouldn't recommend that oh happening God. to anyone. It's extra Well, I had a muscle spasm, that's how it started, mm-hmm. and it's ungodly fucking painful. And like you oh you get God. like kind of sort <laughs> paralyzed isn't the right word, but you can't hinge like like bend your body down yeah. oh very painful anyway so that's kind of like taken over my life but luckily i've been doing acupuncture and they've been doing like the electricity kind so yeah. that is immensely helped so i'm doing pretty good but anyway i wanted to talk about a book i read recently because i thought it was kind of fitting mm-hmm. um it's called the pisces by melissa broder mm-hmm. and if you've heard of melissa broder or if you haven't you've probably seen her tweets before she she kind of that's like kind of how she made a name for herself she's a writer and everything but so sad today is the twitter account but it was like a very dry dark self-deprecating like femme perspective yeah but the book is about this person who's like chaotic and they go and like rent a house i think in venice beach and it's just them like they're going to like love addiction or sex addiction like group therapy or whatever and they're very cynical about everything and then she meets um a merman oh yeah and it's like wild it's all about sex so it's yeah it's it's like so funny like you either love or hate the book i'm on the love side and i feel like you'd like it because it's really like fun and like it's it's it's, like like, 50 shades of gray but with a mermaid yeah (laughs) a merman like she she literally like has to like when she takes him out of the water to bring back to her place to just have sex she like has to she (laughs) <laughs> she carries him in a um like a wheelbarrow oh my god <laughs> i know but yeah i had I had bonnie watch or read it and i think she liked it but yeah is he like a siren yep merman definitely a siren oh <laughs> and he's he's like described as like like this like um really tempting like 25 year old yeah and she's like i think in her like mid 30s and it's kind of like wow this like really attractive like mystical like yeah. being is into me i'm going yeah. for it yeah it's ridiculous a mermaid dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you want to get into today's, we're doing another double feature. Yes. In this episode, we're going to be talking about two movies again. And the reason is because these two movies came out the same year while they're part of a trilogy. And the movies are... X and Pearl. It's all right. Here, here. You're safe now. Okay. Oh, you heard it. I don't see anything. My Nana gets confused sometimes as well. I learned all about it. Believe it or not, I even thought about becoming a nurse one day. So, okay, why don't you come with me? Oh! What the hell did you do that for? I don't need a nurse. Why should you get to have it all? What have you ever done except be a whore? Okay, you know what? You don't want my help? No problem. I was just trying to be nice. You don't deserve to be able to just flaunt it in my face like you do. It ain't my fault you didn't live the life you wanted. Now move out of the way, please. So we're going to talk about X first because that was the first movie we both saw together Mm -hmm. at the Landmark Theater. 
R. I. P. That Wait. theater experience was so fun. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. Like it was so fun because it was like a smaller theater too, mm-hmm. and um, couches, couches, leather couches. My junior men's fell on me. <laughs> Ricky was wearing like this like cute denim jacket, and we're like sitting in the movie, and somehow he like spills junior men's everywhere. <laughs> and like you know, when someone spills stuff in a theater, it's like so funny. <laughs> Because you're like desperately trying to gather everything and like be quiet. Yeah, and this was there was like what ten people in this yeah, movie theater because that's all that, mm-hmm. that they can fit in there. Yeah, and you can hear everything. Oh yeah. So when my junior mints fell on me, like it was loud. Yeah. <laughs> and the movie what just started and it was like the most quiet part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because any other part like whatever, but. Yeah. Yeah. That um, was so funny. And when we got out to the car, you had like melted chocolate on your jacket and you were like, fuck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good time. Like I, I missed that theater, honestly. Like I know. Was, that was that was like really that was like I loved that experience. It was yeah. like like the intimacy, like we were all kind of like laughing together and like it was so comfortable. And you were kind of at eye level with the projection, yeah. which was like highly recommend. Per- perfect. <laughs> Yeah. It was just like, uh, it felt like um, you had your own screening room. Yeah, basically. definitely. And we were there to judge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we came to judge. I was so excited for this film because it's called X and it's a slasher film that's featuring people making a porno. Yeah, and that was the one thing. I didn't know what the movie was about. I like didn't see a trailer or anything. Oh. I heard about it in the film festival circuit. You know, the title X, I was like, oh, it's probably like, there's probably like porno. Right, yeah. <laughs> Right, it goes. Yeah, it's definitely that's a that's where your brain goes. Yeah, and I did not know it was gonna go that route. <laughs> <laughs> and it it went there. It definitely went there, and I I was all for it. Some people were like, mm, not for me, and I was just like, dude. It's like this old lady who is sex deprived goes on a killing spree. <laughs> right. She's like this. It's like this weird sort of she's. Well, it, I mean, you really get an understanding of it with Pearl. But yeah, she. it's. Yeah. So if like we kind of just like go back through the movie, yeah. it's it's set up in the South. Do they name a state? So I think it's in Texas. Oh, really? But I, I was getting I was getting like Oklahoma vibes. Oh, <laughs> totally uh because like in pearl like she's like going to this audition which looks like she's auditioning for oklahoma yeah yeah 100 percent. why do you look like you're auditioning for oklahoma <laughs> in a good way or a bad way <laughs> So yeah, I think watching it, I was, I kind of went in, I I like to go to films with no expectations, especially horror films or slasher films, because it can really go either way. It's either going to be extremely predictable or it's going to, you know, be like really fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, I loved it. I thought it, it was really well made, really thoughtfully made. And I love 70s film. And it's a very, it's very like homage to that. It takes yeah. place in 1979. And yeah, that's like one of my favorite hours of cinema. And yeah, I think like it, just the perfect setting, like seeing it in a intimate theater, like where we can all like just like laugh, especially yeah. because like you do watch like porn scenes. Yeah. And I think that's what I liked about it too, was like, it was following a group of filmmakers who mm-hmm. were making an adult film. They just go into this farm to shoot this movie mm-hmm. and it's owned by like this old couple. Yeah. Okay, for those who don't know what this movie is about, it takes place in 1979 and it follows a group of young filmmakers set out to make this adult film on an isolated farm in rural Texas. But when their reclusive elderly hosts catch them in the act, the cast find themselves fighting for their lives. And it's starring Mia Goth, Brittany Snow... Kid Cuddy. I don't even know his full name. So I'm just putting, I'm just saying Kid Cuddy. He's not credited as Kid Cuddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jenna Ortega, who we know from Scream 2022 mm-hmm. and Wednesday Adams on the Netflix show, mm-hmm. uh, Owen Campbell and Martin Henderson, who was in The Ring and he was a yes. daddy. Mm-hmm. And he's in the Toxic Music video by Britney Spears. Because he was in that movie Twerk, oh. which is what that song was made for. 
Oh my, what? Yeah. <laughs> You're blowing my mind right now. Yeah. That's why there's a whole part where Britney Spears is on a motorcycle. What? Yeah. <laughs> How did I not know that? If you guys don't know, I was the original Britney Spears diehard fan. I have since sort of retired that title because I'm not a fan. Not a fan is the wrong word. I don't like learning how she was um, traumatized and exploited. And it's really hard to see where she's at. Yeah. So Martin Henderson, he's a Kiwi. A Kiwi? Mm -hmm. He's from New Zealand. Oh, I didn't even know that term. Yeah, Kiwi. (laughs) It's their state bird. It's a flightless bird. It doesn't fly? Mm-mm. It just walks around? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's one of the only stars who's from New Zealand, and the film was shot there. What? Really? It was shot in New Zealand. I know that shocked me. Wow. That could have fooled me. I mean, mm-hmm. made it look like Texas. <laughs> oh, it 100% looked like the American South. That's yeah. why I was, I was like, what? But I think... New Zealand is a geologically very diverse. So they have a South in New Zealand. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this movie was directed by Ty West. He directed House of the Devil and The Innkeepers. I wasn't a huge fan of House of the Devil, but I did like The Innkeepers, but both movies were kind of mediocre. But this one was a step above. I mean, both X and Pearl were a step above both those movies that I just mentioned. So... Um, so back to X. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know back then like that you could rent out like a house yeah. on a farm. How did they find this location? Like, yeah, you know? like maybe um, a bulletin board or a flyer or word of mouth. But yeah, you're right because yeah. it's it's. 19- Cause we didn't have Airbnb back then. <laughs> no, <laughs> but yeah, when when um Wayne, like the executive producer, gets there, it's yeah. like the the old guy answers the door pretty aggressively. I think he's holding his his shotgun and he's like, "Get out of my, you know, yeah, get off my porch." And the guy's like, "Wait a minute, like we spoke on the phone. I'm renting this house from you." And the guy seems really confused, which I wonder if he actually spoke to Pearl mm-hmm. because I wouldn't be surprised if Pearl is like in her own way trying to be like a siren and lure people to her place yeah she's like yes come literally come (laughs) (laughs) but yeah and i loved the cast Mm -hmm. it had such a perfect cast like really good yeah chemistry everyone killed it yeah britney snow oh my god i was surprised to see her in this too so surprised and she was like I love the way she enters the film. If you recall, she comes out of, there's like a wide shot of the strip club and there's a mural. And I think the mural is of her or it's like a Marilyn Monroe, but Uh it's a woman, you know, like um, kind of burlesque looking. And she comes out of a door and the door is like camouflaged into the mirror, but it comes out of the woman's like body or whatever oh and it just says alligator burlesque (gasps) which foreshadows yep 100 (laughs) percent. i know i was like i was like like i watched it a second time and i was like oh there's so many like clever things in here yeah so i love that and she just fucking killed it like right away i'm like wow because we always see her as like a very american sweetheart i first saw her in american dreams do you remember that show yeah this is like a big pivot she's done horror before no it's not her first what else um she was in this short or not short film she was in this film called would you rather oh i didn't see it it's pretty good and it's dark it's kind of like the ready or not like type but yeah wait so is it like the invitation not quite like that okay it's more of like ready or not meets like saw oh god yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah, I so I only know her as, yeah, very sweetheart. She's in Pitch Perfect, right? Yeah, she's like in all the Pitch Perfect movies. And I will say, if there's any um, anyone who has control over her appearance in a film, keep her blonde. Yeah. Keep her blonde. It's like what... Because she has like the bluest eyes I've ever seen. And she has also one of the most perfect, charming smiles. Mm-hmm. Like whenever she smiles, I'm like, damn. Like she's so like like a sparkly diamond or something. Yeah. And Mia Goth too. She's like really good in this. And the fact that she's playing both the old lady mm-hmm. and Maxine. That's her character's name. That's like really cool. Yeah. She was phenomenal. So, Brittany, tell us the budget on this movie. So, X and Pearl each individually had a 
one million dollar budget shut up which if you're if you're not in the film world one million dollars is nothing it's nothing to make a film i mean it is for like it would be for us but it's insane and so the box office for x mm-hmm. 14 and a half million wow and the box office for Pearl, 9.4 million. Wow. And so if you think about the ROAS, the return on, I mean, advertise, you know, ad spend, but like if we think about like the return of this film and A24 put these both out, very good. So the thing about that is that like they pretty much shot both movies at the same time. So mm-hmm. they saved money from shooting both movies simultaneously. Yep. And I think Mia Goth was just like asked to stay around. Ty West like wrote the script, like I think pre-production of X. Yeah, because he had been quarantined in New Zealand. And I think during that two week is when it really hit him. Like, I want to make Pearl. And he talked to Mia and she was like, I'm 100% down. And I'm glad they did because it's, yeah, it really adds. And I think it so well weaves both films weave in together. Yeah. More so Pearl, like there's a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of like homage shots. Yeah. Yeah. And everything we'll talk about the foreshadowing because there's mm-hmm. a lot watching both movies you'll be like oh that's a reference to the mm-hmm. other movie yeah let's talk about the movie like things that stuck out to us like what we liked disliked do you want to go first sure so one of the things right off the bat as far as like the genre goes is i love there's like certain scenes that have like these couple note um kind of like when you put your hand on a piano like you're not playing the piano or playing keys but like you press your hand on the piano keys it's very homage to you know horror especially friday the 13th it gave me a lot of vibes Mm -hmm. and even the way they mix the audio felt really like of the time so i i loved that i love how it was shot i love all of the consideration for how everything was shot so the first very first shot looks like a four by three and it's looking out from the barn and we will do that exact same shot starting pearl okay i don't i don't remember the opening of pearl it's I actually i don't remember the opening of x either so the opening of x is a sheriff at the so he's right oh yeah that's right it kind of bookends with um the sheriff and what are they called what's a sheriff's like minions deputy deputies yeah them at the house and you know all these like blood <laughs> blood yeah, corpses complete crime scene yep and it's it's very like what like what a mess what the hell happened here because it's an old farm yeah you know but then after that like they go down to the basement Mm-hmm. and then they find that body mm-hmm. and then you're like and that's when like we kind of rewind to like the beginning of the story because like yeah. everything that we're seeing is like the end of the movie yeah so then you you yeah you, it goes back and um it's like mia sitting at a mirror in the strip club and you kind of get a rundown of like what who these people are and what yeah. their plans are yeah and then that's when we meet britney snow and the filmmakers is some guy who looks exactly like lou taylor pucci the actor oh yeah he looks exactly like him yeah and and then his sound um boom operator is jenna is, ortega yeah yeah and she's like his, his girlfriend. new girlfriend right oh maybe they didn't seem like they had like a, a well no yeah it was like brand new mm-hmm and they're very kind of they're not like in their element he is he's convinced that he's going to make like an artistic porno <laughs> he's like a, i'm i'm a filmmaker you know elevated porn <laughs> yeah and she's sort of like the she's kind of like the viewer you know yeah. because she's kind of like this is i don't know what i think about this mm-hmm. um and questioning everything basically right she's so curious Mm -hmm. and um and she looks very young i was like so young i was like what is this like 16 year old doing (laughs) on this porn set (laughs) right and there there's yeah there's like a lot of like innuendos like the van they're driving it says plowing service (laughs) (laughs) i forgot about that. yeah i don't think i noticed it the first time but when i was watching it the other night i was like oh my gosh oh my god yeah and then like they stop at a gas station and he's sl- the Wayne the EP who's I think is he Mia's boyfriend uh, or Maxine's boyfriend yes okay so he like slaps her butt and he says um you have the x factor I'm a star <laughs> <laughs> I'm a star 
And that's her whole thing. Like her character, you know, right off the bat being like, I want to be a star and like looking in the mirror. Yeah. Very black swanny too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I loved, so they added freckles for her look and they're kind of like heavy on one side and it, for whatever reason, really reminds me of Bowie's Ziggy Star, hmm. like the lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, but it really reminds me of that. Maybe because she had like such pigmented blue eyeshadow too. Yeah. God, that eyeshadow is so ugly. <laughs> oh, I actually thought she like could pull, pull it off. off. I feel like because it was that time period, it like yeah, she looked good. Yeah, yeah, and there's just like I don't know a lot of things that just felt really appropriate in the film. Mm-hmm. Like even the scene, like after their first day of shooting the porno, they all they Kid Cudi starts um, playing the acoustic guitar and oh my god, and then it's like Britney Snow singing. Yeah, she's singing <laughs> um, "Landslide" by Fleetwood Mac. I know. I was like, this is like a pitch perfect moment. <laughs> I, it was like kind of cringy, but like at the same time, like you're seeing um, it's cutting back to like Pearl, old Pearl, and she's like looking at herself in the mirror mm-hmm. and the song is about being old or whatever mm-hmm. pearl is like kind of going through her little kind of like looking, um, reflecting at her yeah. looking at her reflection like i'm not the same person anymore i'm trying to be like pretty and yeah sh- like this sort of um jealousy and like because she's also been kind of peeping on them and watching them and these are like young really attractive women who are yeah. who are like engaging in like very pleasurable activities set being sex yeah. but also the one of the things i love too like in regards to the setting and it really feeling like the south i think partially because that weird bug sound that's like you know it's like, <laughs> like a, a very cicada? yeah like a cicada or something so you hear that outside too in the very beginning and i think that helps make it feel authentic but the other thing is the whole movie like really looks hot sticky yeah and i think that kind of also is appropriate because that's how pornos can often feel yes (laughs) hot and sticky yeah (laughs) but i mean it was like i just love the contrast between characters too because mia the whole time is like low-key being really serious because she's like really serious about this she's like this is gonna be my big break i gotta really like crush it like staying you know i don't know and then britney snow is like super fun she's like very kind of like loosey-goosey cavalier very bubbly she's in a relationship with kid Mm cuddy and they're kind of like i think probably the main relationship in the porno too when we're first seeing that that's the first scene they shoot is like her and him and like it was just great like it was really funny seeing her because she there's like a part where she kind of like stops doing like the porny moans and she's looking at something and then she's like and then kind of like goes back to it and it's like it's just really showing off like, oh yeah i remember that yeah like how in porn she's like out of character and then the the guy's like stay in character and she's like oh yeah oh. <laughs> yeah like just really showing that like how women have to like really exaggerate in porn yeah. and then it was just so neat when we see like um maxine's first porn scene because yes. she's like acting all sensual like yeah. Yeah. Totally different from Britney's. Or what's Britney's character's name? I don't think we know. I'm just calling her Britney's. Now. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> Britney's now. <laughs> yeah, because look it up. Maxine is like she's like kind of riding him in a much more fluid, sensual yeah. way. And her her sounds are more like I don't want to make the sound, but it's longer. <laughs> and it goes back to Pearl because that scene is very similar to when um Pearl's having sex with the scarecrow. Oh yeah. If you if you look at those scenes and you know, the scene where Maxine is having her her sex scene, she's doing yeah. her sex scene. Pearl's peeping through the window. Right. And she's seeing flashback or she's like picturing herself mm-hmm. doing the same motions as Maxine, which goes back to her moment with the scarecrow. And I was like, wow, that's like, yeah, that's like a great callback. Like yeah. Connecting them to. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, exactly. Just like circling back to how thoughtful this whole thing is. I was going to say, so like there's the scene where the character Lorraine, who is Jenna Ortega, mm-hmm. she when she gets like locked in the basement, that was so barbarian to me. The movie yes. Barbarian, <laughs> like I was like, oh, is she about to like find a, tra- a trap door? And <laughs> no, that's Scream. 
She's really good at screaming. Yeah. No, and that's the thing. Like, that was, like, a big um, promotional image is, like, her big scream. Yeah. Because it is really good. She's, like, s- straight up really and screaming. And they, they did market this as, like, Jenna Ortega because Scream had come out, mm. like, before this movie. Mm-hmm. So people are already like, oh, Jenna Ortega's in this, too? Like, she's yeah. going to be, like, the new Scream queen of 2022. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and that's the other thing is, like, I... Overall, like, I think just, like, Mia Goth was just so good. It's, like, the first really big film she's been able to carry as an actress. Because mm-hmm. um, I think her start is, like, a model. She, and she's very runway, vibey model. Yeah. Um, she's British, but she's also Brazilian and Canadian, I guess. Oh. Yeah, but... Anyway, I did want to mention she is a Scorpio. And her... Oh, uh-huh, her not like, a Gemini. No, but Shia LaBeouf is. Ew. Who is her... Baby daddy. Baby daddy, ex-husband. ex-husband. So apparently, I've heard that they weren't even legally married. They just like did a ceremony. They did a live stream ceremony in Vegas, if anyone yeah. remembers. And their child, Isabel, is a Pisces. Or she's an Aries. I just know she was born this year in March. Wow. I know, super funny. But anyway... Yeah, just like seeing her the whole film because she she's just much more not exactly grounded, but you just know she very much has like there's something this is really important to her like she really wants this and yeah and I loved the gator like I just yes, love Theta yeah <laughs> Theta Theta that whole scene where we see her swimming in the middle of the lake yeah I love that part yeah and she they cut to um like a bird's eye view shot yeah and she's swimming back to the dock this little wooden dock and we see the gator following yeah. her and then the second the gator's getting close and gonna, you know, she jumps out of the water and you find out she's, it's revealed that she, this is like her opening introduction in the porno. Yes. Is her like, is she skinny? Di- yeah, she's skinny dipping. Yeah. But the gator just misses her and yeah, that that was just like so cool. Like Yeah, and it was like really cool to see that in the theater because like it's such a wide shot mm-hmm. and like it's very atmospheric, like oh, just yeah. like the music too. It's very eerie and haunting yeah i keep using the word haunting but (laughs) it is yeah totally at that point in the film like there has been they very in like a very in a very smooth way they're they're slowly kind of building up the suspense of like what's going to happen yeah um like what's gonna happen here because so far it's like you're you don't really know what's gonna happen you're just like okay it's the 70s these people are going to a farm to make a porno culturally it's not really accepted like sex is like not seen as like a positive thing across the united states at least from what i'm aware of and so like they're on a farm in some country with like old people so you're also kind of like well they better not catch them because you also know this guy has a shotgun so you just know like it would be big trouble for them if they got caught like yeah and i oh oh, one thing i wanted to mention it was when i was watching it i was like kid cuddy is like the only black actor right like black character in the film well other uh, than the the sheriff Sheriff, yeah. other than the sheriff but like in this group and i like googled it so i was like i wonder if this is like saying something about that that like genre black it's black exploitation but you say like blacks yeah okay the word is black exploitation okay so like the film i think alice is supposed to be like a nod to that the kiki palmer one that came out is the initial shack character was he introduced in the 70s as like a black yes shaft was in the 70s and mm-hmm. so it was um uh, foxy brown foxy brown yeah. yeah which beyonce does foxy cleopatra in oh Austin and Austin Powers. Powers gold member <laughs> yeah so it's this kind of very it can oftentimes be disco kind of vibey but yeah, that like hit me and I was like, I wonder if that's supposed to be an element of this porno. Yeah, because that music, the disco music is mm-hmm. like, every time they're shooting something, it's always that music. Yeah, it's like. Bang, chuk, bang, chuk, yeah, bang. like very stereotypical, like vintage porn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So th- that was like something watching this a- another time. Out. You know, just like every little layer to the film, as we love to say. <laughs> <laughs> so many layers like an onion <laughs> yeah those are kind of just like overall like the things i really appreciated about the film what about you like what was like your big likes another scene that that i really liked was when pearl she does her first kill 
the camera dude. So, RJ. His name is RJ. Oh, yeah. So he's like planning. He's like trying to leave the the shoot. He's like. Uh, because his girlfriend, the boom operator, after their one day of shooting, she's like, I want to be in the film. And then they shoot a scene and he like mentally can't handle it. He emotionally yeah. can't handle it. And he's like jealous and he's like, fuck these people. Like, I'm going to ditch them and leave. But then like he runs into Pearl because she's like in the middle of the road and like he's like trying to help her. But then Pearl's like really in her element where she's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so she murders him. She stabs him in the neck and like the blood from her stabbing him like sprays onto the, the headlights of the van and it just like turns like the whole screen like red. The light yeah. It's like very red. Do you remember the foreshadowing of that scene? No. So when they're driving to the farm, they drive past a cow that's been hit by a car and there's they show a, the last shot of that scene is blood on the headlights. Oh. Isn't that funny? That is funny. Well, and we should mention before she kills him, she gets close to him and is doing her weird sensual stuff. Ugh. Oh, yeah. She's like feeling him up like mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, um, no, not it. <laughs> but then, OK, after she like stabs him, she does the she's like dancing like very dramatically like ballet yep. almost to that song we oui, we oui, marie mm -hmm. and it's like really it's so creepy and yeah. beautiful at the same time yeah. i'm like what the fuck right and she she straddles him do you remember that she straddles him she straddles him so she like stabs him in the neck when they're standing yeah he falls and she straddles him and repeatedly stabs him in the chest area yeah and then the blood is just spraying all yeah. over the headlights which i don't think would actually happen but no <laughs> i know <laughs> that was like the campy part of the movie i mean yeah. there's a lot of campiness into this movie but that's what i liked about x but yeah that scene where she's like dancing it's like really ominous and like kind of cathartic it's beautiful. Anyways, well done. Love that. <laughs> okay, so a lot of my favorite scenes are like the death scenes. Britney Snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So here again, Britney Snow runs into like Pearl and basically is trying to like help her. And she's like saying like, I wanted to be a nurse. And like, she's kind of talking down to her. Kind of. Don't Pearl you is or Britney? No, I think Britney is like unintentionally talking down to Pearl. Be don't you think? kind of i have would have to watch that scene again but i just remember like her saying like oh i wanted to be a nurse i can help you and then pearl's like i don't need a fucking nurse yeah <laughs> and then she like slaps britney and she's like what the fuck yeah <laughs> and then pearl's like just like saying like oh she's a deviant whore and like i know what you guys are doing in there because mm -hmm. she's like obviously jealous yep. and like it kind of goes back to the movie Pearl where like blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brittany Snow. Is it her? Her It's her sister-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. In Pearl. Yeah. She has a sister-in-law who looks really similar to Brittany Snow. Yeah. So we already get the vibe that she doesn't like this girl to begin with. And basically like Brittany is like, well, it's not my fault that you didn't get to do what you want in your life. And <laughs> She pushes her into the, the lake where the alligator is. <laughs> and then she's like, bitch. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> and then the fucking alligator just comes. That part kind of like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. It was like kind of like a jump scare. Totally. Because we I hadn't really, it. we hadn't had a jump scare yet. Yeah. Actually, wait. I'm trying to remember like the order of the deaths, but like Are Mark you gonna say Wayne? Yeah, the eyeball. You're right. That it was the first kind that of that part like really freaked me out because like the editing in that scene, mm -hmm. it cuts away from when he actually gets stabbed. And then it cuts to Jenna Ortega in the basement and she turns on the light. Yeah. And then when she turns on the light, it cuts back to the eye pulling. Ugh. Yeah, she like pulls the pitchfork out of the eye. It's and so that gross. part is just like so jarring. In the beginning of that scene, he steps on the biggest nail. Oh, yeah. He steps in. When I was watching it with my partner, they were like, oh, God, oh, God, they better not. And he like looked away. <laughs> he like couldn't watch it. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, back to the Britney's kill. Um, You reminded me that in Pearl, 
the sister-in-law so the whole movie of pearl she wants to you know become the star and there's an audition Mm -hmm. and her sister-in-law wins yeah so there's that extra layer of hatred toward like a a young blonde i mean they both have short like curled blonde hair blue eyes Mm -hmm. yeah and there's a part where like pearl says like to her husband she's like you know, I, I don't like blondes. Yeah. Or you know how I do. <laughs> and yeah, and Pearl's husband is aware of who Pearl is throughout the entire film. Yeah, because he's trying to do everything for her, like mm-hmm. give her everything that she needs. Yeah. And um, like cleaning up her mess. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh my God, that scene where they do it. Oh. <laughs> I'll ne- that scene will never not be. It is so disgusting. But before that scene, Pearl gets in bed oh, with yeah, Maxine. With- Which I wonder how they did that because like... I'm pretty sure, so watching it the this, this second time, the way you see it is um, Maxine in the foreground of the shot and then it's like a, a rack focus to Pearl. I think they probably superimposed her face that's okay yeah that's what i figured yeah but then there's also a part where like you see i think a bird's eye view of them both in the bed together are they is at that point is pearl's arms on top of her something like that okay because yeah that'd be that's like where it gets a little tricky to film unless unless again you did I mean, they had to have done some sort of yeah. masking or something. I really loved how they did that. Mm-hmm. Mm. And again, it's one of those things where you're just like, whenever you see actors do that, like be themselves in a scene, like it's just like, I don't know, it's just more respect to them. Yeah. Mia Goth. What a name. I know. Do you know her full name? No. It's Mia Gypsy Mello da Silva Goth. Oh, wow. I know. <laughs> it's That's like, a wow. long <laughs> What else did you like? Okay, so I did want to mention like that one part. It's a line that Pearl says to Maxine, which is very foreshadowing to like Pearl's origin story. And she says to Maxine, like, we're the same. You're just like me. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. Literally, because it's (laughs) both. They're the both characters are played by me. Um, And then, um, the part where Maxine, she's like screaming like, I'm a fucking star, which is exactly what Pearl says in her movie. Yeah. There's a lot of foreshadowing. <laughs> there is this line after when Lorraine says, I want to be in the porno. And like, RJ's like shocked. And he's like, no, no. And everyone else is like, let her. Wayne, who's the executive producer, is like, let's step outside before we start saying things we regret. And he's outside talking to him. And RJ's big point is that Lorraine's a good girl. And then Wayne just says, or he says she's a nice girl. And Wayne just says, there are no nice girls. (laughs) I was like, like, okay. Oh, my God. I think this kind of rolls into. So I don't know if you noticed, but like, I think the second scene, Maxine porn scene she's shooting is when she's milking the cow and she's wearing overalls that look really similar to the overalls Pearl wears when she's like Mm -hmm. working on the farm. Being in the barn is directly just like, you know, Pearl being in the barn and Pearl like is, I think she's tending to a cow and there, I can't remember the cow's name, but she's kind of like talking to the cow and like she's collecting alligator eggs and I'm like, yeah. that's like, that was so weird. So Brittany Snow does a slate and the film is called, or that scene or whatever. So it's called The Farmer's Daughter. Oh. And Pearl is a farmer's daughter. And this is crazy. In the 1970s, a porno was made in the south called the farmer's daughter oh wow but the male in it would be the one to go on to be become like a hollywood porn star oh wow i know misogyny yeah (laughs) (laughs) and that's crazy yeah super crazy oh and just pearl doing the pitchfork stuff in the barn and everything that's Like her weapon, right? That's like such a character. Such a character. And there what was kind of interesting was 
I can't remember if I think it was the when Wayne is being killed in the barn and everything. It reminds me of a scene in Pearl where she's killing the projectionist. Like, oh, because she uses the pitchfork too. Yeah, his oh my eye. God. Like she yes, goes she through their eyes. In the face. Yeah, <laughs> which when she when she does the pitchfork kills and stuff, I'm just like she is so full of rage. Like it's so it's not just like killing someone, but she's like brutally. She doesn't even think about it. She just mm-hmm. does it. Yeah. I was going to ask, did the, so like when um Kid Cuddy gets killed, it's like he's also like trying to help the old man. Oh, yeah. By the lake. They're trying to look for Pearl. And there's this like sweet part where he talks about how he served and he's like, you know, always a soldier, always a soldier, you know, no man left behind or something. But he sees a half submerged yellow beetle bug. And at first I was like, that can't be the projectionist, right? Because Pearl takes place in the 1918. I'm like, there's no way they had beetle bugs back then. Right. But yeah, I couldn't figure out whose beetle bug that was. It's probably the guy that was in the basement with a huge long. Okay, that's <laughs> that was my next question. Because I couldn't, at first I was like, is that Wayne? And then I'm like, no, that can't be Wayne. And then I was like, is that RJ? No, that can't be RJ. And then I was like, who is that? Yeah, so the guy in the basement was like missing there's like a foreshadow of like the missing person on like a mill carton. Oh. And that's the guy in the basement. Oh, I his... didn't catch that. Yeah. There's a lot of foreshadowing. So many layers. So many layers. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on to Pearl. Yes. Pearl. Pearl. <laughs> Pearl. 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 X, 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 X. So this is the synopsis. Trapped on her family's isolated farm, Pearl must tend to her ailing father under the bitter and overbearing watch of her devout mother. Desperate from her glamorous life, Pearl's ambitions, temptations, and repressions all collide in the stunning Technicolor-inspired origin story of X's iconic villain. Yes. And Mia Goth is slaying Mm -hmm. this. She's a baddie. Yep. Bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's starring Mia Goth, obviously. David Cornsweet. He's like one of like Ryan Murphy's. Oh, right. Yeah. But he was in um the show Hollywood on Netflix, which is produced by Ryan Murphy and also The Politician. Anyways, so he's in that show. Tandy Wright, who plays the mother, and Emma Jenkins Puro, who plays the sister-in-law, and directed by Ty West. Before we get into it, you want to talk about your movie experience? Yeah, so we went together at the AMC in the Century City Westfield Mall, right? Yeah, we were late. <laughs> yeah, we were. We, That's the right. movie had started already, and I was like, fuck. What did we miss? I rewatched the opening and I was like, oh, I didn't miss anything. It starts off like very, you know, La La Land. Mm hmm. But she's like in the barn and like she's dancing with a pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think we knew we wanted to do an episode. Yeah. So we were like, okay, let's go see Pearl. Because mm-hmm. the teaser for Pearl was in the end credits, post credits scene mm-hmm. in X. And we're like, okay okay we gotta go see this um different movie (laughs) (laughs) i didn't like it as much as x but i still like it yeah for different reasons and i feel like a lot of people like this movie much more than x for different reasons and i think i mean to each their own yeah but it was not my style if you ask me it's a different genre yeah I mean, it kind of reminded me of, like, Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And, like, just because, like, the colors popped out more. Yeah. And it felt more of, like, that era. Yeah. I think that because... And it was just, like, kind of a slow burn. And... Which, again, fits more into that era. um, Because, like, nowadays we're, like, hyper reactive and like we gotta have jump scares this guy whatever yeah and that one's more pearl is more like slice of life kind of yeah but i was gonna say the one thing i remember like big thing i remember about when we went to the film was i was like this is too long and i need to like stand up and stretch my legs and move around oh my god 
Like it was one of those movies. Yeah, well, we were like sitting on the way way back and like yeah. you were like puffing your <laughs> I think I was cold. Were you cold? I think so. Yeah, you were like puffing your vape. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany was like vaping in the back. It was too long. I was like, I'm going to have to. There wasn't here. that many people in the theater too. So I yeah. was like, but we sat in the way, way back. And I was like, this is a very high seating area. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Probably because we thought it would be busy. Yeah. I mean, that was the weird thing is they did market it pretty well. I would even almost think more than X, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe because A24 was like, okay, X made us a lot of money compared to the budget. So let's try to like keep that going for Pearl. It only got yeah. like about half or less than half, I should or more than half. I'm sorry, probably like 60% of what X got. Um, the box office for Pearl was 9.4, like I mentioned before also a million dollar budget and people would like text me about it like oh are you seeing pearl have you heard of pearl so then mm -hmm. it not performing as well as x i was like really surprised yeah I, I feel like people who saw the trailer for pearl was like uh i don't really understand what this movie is about unless they saw x True. like the people that saw pearl saw x because it looks like, yeah, like Annie Oakley or Dorothy. Mm -hmm. But then there's like some hints of like murder in the trailer. So it's like, that's like a pretty niche audience. Yeah. The trailer did kind of give off like this La La Land mm -hmm. movie turned horror. Yeah. I can see like that's not like everyone's cup of tea. Right. But that's the thing. Like watching the film, it was like, this is a lot of character development. Mm -hmm. And there were so many moments where I was like, and she's going to kill. No, nope. <laughs> she's going to. Nope. She's definitely going to kill her dad at some point. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling she I thought maybe she would like um, suffocate him just so she wouldn't have to babysit him. Yeah. But um, I never really felt like she had hatred toward him, like or resentfulness the way she did right. with her mom. I, I thought like she would have killed her mom like sooner. I know. And. So that was one of the things that I didn't like about the movie was her mom was like too mean. Like her mom was really mean. Yeah. And cold. And I understand it's because of like the difficulty and like life hardship that she's experienced and like immigrating to America and all mm -hmm. that. But I was just like, can a human be this miserable? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Well, I think it's because the mother probably has, she's just been taking care of people yeah. so much that she's built this like animosity towards everything. Oh, that's an interesting Because like the dad is like in the wheelchair and like she has to fucking take care of him. He can't and even she, speak. And she has to take care of the farm. Pearl. The farm. Mm -hmm. And like she's probably having to work too. Yeah, like I understand she's exhausted and depleted, but it was just, I mean, to see a mother and wife, a caretaker, matriarch, literally not have one moment of like being kind or like lovable. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not doubting there are people like that or like that's how a lot of people were. It was just really uncomfortable. <laughs> Did that bother you at all? Mm, no but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was just it was really uncomfortable watching someone who's a matriarch a mother she's being stretched in way too many directions mm -hmm. she's also like done the difficult difficult thing of like leaving germany i think I it was remember. i think it was germany if it wasn't germany it was like austria or something oh yeah maybe but the fact that like they couldn't sit down and have dinner and her say something like so how was your day? Yeah. Like literally nothing. She was only like very like cold and like. And Dry. Yeah. And it was just, it just seems so, I don't know if inhuman is like the word I'm really looking for, but yeah, it was just something where like, it's just like you were, I've never seen anyone so miserable yeah. in my life. I think she's just like really, she's got mental illness, like anger management or something. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Because anger management can it's like genetically so maybe that's where right. pearl pearl is getting her anger from Ooh. yeah it runs in the family that's what <laughs> that's what i that's what i gathered yeah like, yeah just from watching no that makes sense yeah and that is a thing if anyone doesn't know like the i don't know if chemistry is the right word or biology of like your trauma and stuff like is in goes into like the dna of a child you birth 
just crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Theta! I'm leaving soon. I can't stay here any longer. Howard was supposed to take me away. It'd be easier for me if I didn't feel like I was abandoning you. You understand that? I love you, Daddy, but this is no way to live. So I think I had read, I might be mistaken, but weren't they going to shoot it as black and white, but A24 said don't do that? Oh, I didn't or know I, that. I think they shot it thinking it would be, they would have it, they shot it in color. And then, then in post, they would do black and white. Yeah, because the high contrast of color would translate into the, you know, high contrast of blacks and whites. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure A24 was like, no. We want color. We're not doing a black and white film because it's really risky, Mm -hmm. right? To like put out a black and white film because people are like, ew, I'm not watching that. (laughs) Until the the artist comes out. Did you ever see the artist? Yeah. Oh my God, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, And it's a silent film too. So yeah, it's like, like, wow. Really good. So yeah, I think I had read that, which I thought was really neat. And that, that was like one of the things I really liked about the film is that Ty West, like what he did with X, he did with Pearl, which is like the film not only takes place in this time, but like the ambiance of how how they set every you know the locations and you know like Mm -hmm. it it is very like those bright colors yeah so it would have not made sense if they turned everything black and white because like pearls in that red dress and it's like really bright like that wouldn't translate in black and white because it's like her wearing that dress like really represents her anger (laughs) bloodthirst bloodthirst and you know sex deprived (laughs) god yeah like i said it i might be mistaken or i wonder if it was a situation where they just had the same film stock because they were they basically filmed two movies in one like on the shoot because i think pearl was only shot in like a two-week time like something crazy yeah i could see that i mean it wasn't like there was much going on in that movie (laughs) it's a lot of solo scenes with Pearl. yeah and then there's like the other location which is that movie theater where she meets the projectionist Mm -hmm. and i would assume a lot of that was just studio yeah but oh i I was gonna say so i wonder if they just use the same film stock and if he knew, I better shoot this for color in case. Mm, yeah. And I wonder with the idea of black and white, I mean, that I think that would have worked in 1918. They That was probably what it primarily was because Technicolor was the 60s or 50s. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, A Wizard of Oz, the opening scene on the farm is black and white. That would have been really cool if like somehow he started off with black and white and then transitioned into color because like that's how Wizard of Oz was. Yeah, right. Yeah. Even if like in the, I mean, maybe it, maybe they tried it even in post and they were like, eh. But even like once she does her first kill, it goes into color. Ooh, yes. That would have right? been fucking great. So you could have like a visceral reaction to like the energy of like, she's like, I'm alive. <laughs> I know. And interesting, they could have marketed it as like color. Mm. But in the when you go into the movie, it's black and white. Miss opportunity. <laughs> Miss opportunity. Maybe there'll be a director's cut. Yeah, give us a direct. Um, Ty West, I would like get credit <laughs> for this idea. <laughs> Yeah, hire Ricky. (laughs) I'm an editor. Hire me. (laughs) What was your favorite part of the film? Okay, I have several favorite scenes. (laughs) The scarecrow dancing scene was Mm. one of my favorites because it was just like really out there and like it was the most bizarre part of the movie. And it's the first time we see her kind of show some sort of psychotic or very imaginative. Yeah, and she had already met, like she's met the projectionist at this time and she's she's infatuated with him because she hasn't seen her husband in a long time he's in war so she's like dancing with the scarecrow which is like in the middle of this cornfield and she's imagining him at one point yeah that he's the scarecrow mm-hmm. 
Well, she starts riding. <laughs> she starts riding the scarecrow. She straddles him on the ground. Yeah, and then like I think she's like actually masturbating because she's rubbing herself against. Yeah, and it's just like wow. Yeah, Interesting. yeah, it was really fun, and and the the setting is like it almost looks like when you see a crop circle, like it's just like yeah. like a small little flattened area of a cornfield, and then the scarecrows in the middle. So it's it kind of looks like a stage. Yeah, and I was gonna say. <laughs> When she orgasms, it's like really dramatic. Yeah, like she's like moaning so loud that the birds are like flying. <laughs> yeah, it's very theatrical. Yeah, which again kind of plays into the theme of the movie because yeah. it's very Titan color. <laughs> <laughs> that scarecrow is kind of creepy looking. They always are. The scarecrow kind of has like bulging eyes. Weird choice. I almost thought like it was like a dead body. Mm-hmm. It just hit me, but. Like Pearl is like really into like sexually assaulting like <laughs> like anyone she's, and everyone. <laughs> she's very into SA. Yeah. <laughs> As what the kids call it now. Did did you notice that when Pearl finally gets to this so the whole film she's she finds out that there's not she's kind of like bored and like having dreams of some sort of better life on the farm but then her sister-in-law tells her about this audition for a dance troupe and she's like, "Oh my god." Like, that's my big thing. Mm -hmm. Really funny. We literally never see her practice. So we have no idea how her dancing is going to be. But I was going to say, did you notice that when she actually steps onto the stage, when she's finally auditioning, there's an X? Yes. Yeah. Like she has to go to her mark. Yes. So the X, it's like a theme in the movie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, both movies, the X. I think that at one point, like during her audition, the song Wee Wee Marie is in there in the background. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, I think you are right because. But it's like a different version of it. It's like very upbeat. Yeah, because when she's dancing, you kind of go into what she's imagining, which is like a huge production. Reminds mm-hmm. me of whenever you see. Did you ever see Big Fish by Tim Burton? No, but that's on my list of movies to watch. It's really good. I would argue it might be his best film, but. The way that film portrays, so you know, like when they would send that, that's when that started happening too. I think, like, uh, whatever era that was, mm-hmm. they would send entertainers to troops to kind of lift their spirits. But that's kind of like, that's what it looked like to me when she was daydreaming, was like those types of uh, theatrics. But it was cool kind of seeing what she sees. Yeah and feels and yeah the songs are kind of like really big and all over the place yeah i'm not a dancer i should not judge dancing at all but as i'm watching it i'm like is she like bad she's so bad (laughs) and also her dancing her choreography she's creating an x if you watch she's she like this is. yeah and i was like oh my god <laughs> so good yeah <laughs> i love that oh my god it was probably so fun being on this production she probably made that whole choreography up like um, just like jenna ortega in yes in wednesday, in wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i watched that show yeah because i saw the tiktoks everyone showing that and i was like all right i'll watch it yeah it's good yeah it's, it's like harry potter and Exactly. Um, so yeah, so my partner said they were like, "This is like it, like someone being like, I really want to make Harry Potter in America." <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're not talking about that show. Back to Pearl. <laughs> oh, there is another thing that I didn't realize until I saw someone mention it online. But in both films, Pearl and Maxine are being introduced to porn by a man oh yeah and that was the thing is like so there was so much build up with the projectionist i would almost argue missed opportunities but when he's showing her the projection and maybe this is because of my own like experience because i used to work in a movie theater and you'd go upstairs to the projection you weren't supposed Mm -hmm. to but like i thought instead of showing her an adult which i'm sure that adult film was probably just like a woman being topless but i thought he was maybe going to show her What's that called? Is that called smut? Like when you have porn where it's tor- you're like killing someone? Oh, like a snuff film? Snuff. That's the word. That's what I, th- I thought he was going to show her something messed up and she was going to be like, oh God. 
And this is where like her idea of like yeah, like I thought comes from. I was like, he's gonna essay her. She's gonna kill him in defense, and that's gonna be like like when her rage comes out right. and she turns into. Por- that's what I thought was gonna happen. It never did. Would have been a good intention. Yeah, miss opportunity. Right. It's so interesting because I didn't know porn existed. Like, of course back, it did. Back then. Right. Of course it did, though. I mean, think about like what we've learned about what is it the. Well, wow, the Romans were sickos, for one. Yeah. But I was going to say, is it Greece that would have, like, a lot of um, sex parties? Yeah. Right? And I guess, like, it's been in art, too. Yeah. Like, a lot of art paintings. Right, yeah. Just straight up nudity. A lot of bestiality art, (laughs) art too. (laughs) If you've ever seen... Some of that old art is like, wow. Right. So, is there anything you, like, really didn't like about the film? Um, besides that, it was like, it felt like really long and it was like too serious for me that it was missing the campiness that X was giving. That's why I really liked X more. Mm -hmm. The vibe of Pearl was like really different from X. It's not my style, but I could see like people who are really into like musical theater and like Wizard of Oz and those type of movies like would really like this. Yeah, definitely. And I think because, like, Pearl's origin story was, like, really interesting, Mm -hmm. except, like, it took forever to get to the point, you know? I only wanted to come to this movie to see her go savage, like... (laughs) Yeah, I was... You just reminded me with her origin story mentioning that. One of the early scenes is her taking her dad to the dock where Theta is, the alligator. Oh, yeah. And it felt like she was going to push him in. Yeah, that was, like... Okay, that part was like really intense because I thought she was going to do it. Yeah. There was like so many moments where she was like thinking about killing her dad. Mm -hmm. There's also really weird scenes where like it almost feels like incestual. Yeah. Like she's looking at her dad like, ooh, maybe I should like sexually assault you (laughs) because she's horny and like her dad's just watching her take a bath. Yeah, and the mom even says, like, what are you doing? And she's like, it's just kind of easier if I can take a bath when he takes a bath because I'm saving water. And it's like she just wants to kind of, like, be naked and, like, I think, feel desired or something. Yeah, because, like, her dad's, like, the only male person in the house. Mm-hmm. And, like, her being naked in the bathtub entices her. You right. know, like, and it's probably enticing the dad too. Yeah, he, I feel like when it did show him, though, it, I felt like he was kind of like, "You are crazy." Like, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, that really makes me think about how isolating her life is. Mm-hmm. Like, because she has, she's like very far into the. She's pushing it, mm-hmm. like those boundaries. <laughs> One of the scenes that I also want to mention is that really long monologue, which I think is really great. Like, yeah. Her performance in that is like really good. Yeah. And so engaging. And she's talking to the sister-in-law at this point. Yeah. And we never see a reaction to the sister-in-law until she's done with the monologue. And the, <laughs> the sister-in-law is like, I got to go. So I should go. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, because she, like, is, what, admitting that she has killed her parents. Yeah, she's kind of on, like, a what could only s- sound like some sort of psychopathic manifesto. Because in the sister was like, you can tell me anything, you can trust me, like, kind of invites her to finally have an opportunity to be vulnerable. And she just, like, overshares. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the sister's like, I better dip. And then, like, she can kind of tell she's not on my side. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so weird to me that, like, when her husband, at the end of the movie, he finally comes back from the war. It's like, she's killed his sister, her parents, some man. Like, it's so interesting and says a lot about him that he would stay with her. But I wonder if that's even, like... Just noting on, like, the culture, because, like, divorce is very frowned upon. And if it was just like, well, I made a commitment to God that I would stay with this woman till death do us part. I mean, he's a killer, too. He's been in war, probably killed people. So both of of them are probably just insane. 
like he's dealing with like uh, PTSD, mm-hmm. but also like killing people probably doesn't face him. So, yeah, like, like he's when desensitized. He's, yeah, he's desensitized, and like Pearl, like killing, they're just meant for each other. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's not meant. We don't mean to say that like that's what all soldiers are like, but like in order for them to have been attracted to each other and to like connect and to get married, they would have seen these traits in one another and not seen them as red flags yeah you know oh my gosh i think the worst part of the film was the turkey carcass the turkey or was it a pig was it a pig it was a pig you're right yeah it was a roast pig and like the maggots and shit were like growing on it so pearl's mother-in-law and the sister in law. And the sister in law come and drop off a pig roast. And does Pearl's mom get really offended by that? Yeah, because she's like, I don't need your help, basically. Yeah. yeah and she's like, fuck you for thinking I can't take care of everything. Yeah. And then so the entire film that just sits on their porch, maybe mm-hmm. Pearl was supposed to throw it away. I have no idea. But I've, I've, yeah, I feel like she, pro- the mom probably told her to. But this pork roast has been, I think, rained on Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like maggots are growing on it when uh the projectionist comes to drop off pearl he notices the the pig roast yeah and it's kind of like that's when he first is like whoa 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 something's not right here because it is like really foul do they have sex no or do they like allude to it or like have they or he tries to or no. maybe he just like feels awkward? No, I don't think they do anything. And I think that's what kept because I thought they would. I think she's trying to lure him into the she, barn, but she, he's yeah. already seen the carcass. And so he knows he's got to get out of there. Yeah. He's like really weirded out. And like Pearl notices that he's acting differently. And she's like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a star. I'm a star no (laughs) oh did you I might I don't know if I'm mixing this up with another film but I think the choreographer or scripty or something someone who was a part of the crew asked Ty if they could play the mom because they knew German or something like that. Oh. I swear I read something about that. Oh, wow. Because I was like, I think I remember thinking like the mom actress was like really, she was really good at playing that role. So she was an intimacy coordinator. Not this movie or any of them, but. Whatever she had worked on before. And she wanted to like, she wanted to play this role. Which I'm surprised like they should have had her as an intimacy coordinator because it would have been like full circle. If you're not familiar with intimacy coordinators, it's basically having someone on set who is being very mindful of what can be uncomfortable or triggering or traumatizing for actors, probably even the crew. But and that's a result from you know us hearing so many stories Mm -hmm. um and like that's yeah that's like a really great part of the crew to be adding nowadays and i'm sure like they had to have that like for x especially because there were so many like sex scenes Mm -hmm. britney snow Mm -hmm. went topless i was shocked yeah (laughs) (laughs) i was like whoa from pitch perfect to porn (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) Oh, I was also disappointed that there wasn't more with Theta. I know. I really and what was up with the eggs? The alligator yeah, eggs? Yeah. Oh, did she squish them later? She did. But like, what was the point of that? Or to show that she like is a killer? Maybe. And maybe even just showing that she, because she's, if you think about it, she's taking away the eggs from Theta. Mm-hmm. and disposing of them so maybe kind of just even speaking to ultimately who she is as a person you know yeah. i don't know but yeah it was like damn theta's like in her 60s and x damn she's old mm-hmm. those are i mean gators are dinosaurs you know can we get a theta movie <laughs> right <laughs> theta so okay so after the trilogy theta's gonna have her own movie yeah <laughs> and it's gonna be about all the people that she's eaten <laughs> oh that would be so good it just cuts into the movie alligator oh my god great movie <laughs> oh 
one thing I like mixed this up, but at the end of X and it showed it at the beginning when the sheriff gets there, but there's like this preacher on TV, like this very old school. Yeah, the evangelist. Yeah. And you find out that's Maxine's dad. Yeah. So for whatever reason, I was like, oh, the same... I don't know why I was thinking this, but I was like, the same preacher or the same things he's saying was also in Pearl, but I think I'm mistaken. So the preacher is her dad. Maxine is like repeating the same behavior message he's saying in this TV. Maybe it'll mean something in the new movie. Yeah. So that's the other thing. So there's at the end of Pearl, you get the teaser for the third installment, which would take. Yeah, it literally takes place as like the third movie. And it's called Maxine with three X's. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be about what happens to Maxine after she drives away from that farm. Yeah. And her uh, she becomes a star. Right. We think. She's a fucking star. Yeah. I'm a fucking star. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be interesting to see how that movie ties into the rest of the movies. Maybe Maxine will end up like Pearl, starting to murder people in the Hollywood Hills. There you go. Boom. There you go. I just wrote this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Again, Ty West, like. Yeah, give me credit. (sighs) You can, um, contact my us. Venmo <laughs> is- <laughs> That's really funny. All right. Well. Well, final thoughts. My final thoughts are I love the world building of Pearl and X. I'm so excited for the third one. If X doesn't end up being my favorite, I definitely think it's going to be Maxine because like just the idea of like, okay, this like 80s or 90s, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because even like the music, it's like very like Miami Vice or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I love it. I think everyone should watch it. I still to this day i'm recommending x to like anyone that likes to watch horror yeah i really liked both films um for different reasons but i liked x more because of the campiness and like the 70s vibe and i guess you could say the vintage porn (laughs) yeah if you like 70s style horror you'll like x but if you like you know movies like wizard of oz or like musical theater you're gonna love Pearl. There's one thing we didn't touch on with Pearl, which is a great way to end the podcast. The last shot yes. of that fucking film. Yes. It's the most, br- We let's not say what it is in case someone doesn't know, but it is one of the most brilliant comedic things I've ever seen. Yes. If you're on TikTok, you may have seen it already. You're just like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good um definitely check out both movies like let us know what you think like i'm really excited for maxine and Mm -hmm. also mia goth she's a bad bitch amazing yeah amazing five stars (laughs) (laughs) on that note Brittany, where can we find you you can find me only on instagram at humble underscore book underscore reviews And Ricky, where can we find you? Uh, You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at some call me underscore Ricky. And Venmo. What's your Venmo? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not telling you my Venmo unless you want to send me money. (laughs) Um, You can just DM me for that. (laughs) (laughs) Follow us. Let us know what you think on Instagram at Paper Screen Podcast. Okay. Bye. Bye.